Math 242, Quest to College. I'm Joe Vasta and this is section 8.6, Partial Fraction Decomposition. It is a topic we have to cover in pre-calculus. You will see this in calculus, probably calculus 2, and if you have to take differential equations, you'll be doing that as well when you do Laplace transforms their inverse transform. So when you're taking integrals in calculus and Laplace transforms in differential equations, these things come up in a lot of places. Let's go ahead and show you what this partial fraction decomposition is. Um, you've got this rational function and you've got factors on the bottom. Now our factors can be linear, like this one. Here's a linear factor that's to a power. This right here is a quadratic factor. Now, we learned earlier in this class we can factor this over the complex numbers, but we're not going to, so that's a quadratic factor. And then here's a quadratic factor to a power of two. So, this is linear, linear, quadratic, quadratic. So what is going to happen here? You are going to break this up into the sum of smaller looking fractions. And so when you've got a linear factor here, we are going to say, well, this thing can be broken up into some number and we'll just call it capital A over X plus two plus, now I had to do it down here because it wouldn't fit over here what I'm going to write. So I'm done with this factor of X plus two. Now I'm going to say another number over x plus 3. Okay, so that was my next linear factor. Now because there is a 2 there, I have to build up to x plus 3 squared by using another fraction, c over x plus 3 squared. Now, if this had been to the fourth power, then I'd have to write an x plus 3 to the third and an x plus 3 to the fourth, and then you would have five terms from, from the first two. Okay, so this one gives me this one, and this one gives me the next two. Um, actually, let's, let's change this problem so it actually has a 3 there, just so just so you can see what happens. So suppose there was a cube there, because I think it's good for us to have that in this problem, that we would write another number d over x plus three to the cube, or to the third or cubed. So that's, that's how you take care of a linear factor to a power, you build up the fractions till you get there. Now, quadratic factor, for a quadratic factor, you know, you might think, oh, we're just going to go like E over the quadratic factor. But that's not going to be the case. Um, what you really need is, and this is just the rules, This is, and we'll, we'll do a few of these. This is going to be E X plus F. So you have to know your alphabet to do this. Um, and when you have a quadratic factor, you have to actually put um, a degree one on top. See, this was a linear, you put a degree zero on top. So that's what, how you take care of quadratic factors. Now you have a quadratic factor raised to a power. So this guy right here is already taken care of. This guy, we're gonna go, what, G X plus H over this quadratic factor x squared plus 5, but because he has a squared, I have to build up to that. So this is going to be i x plus j all over x squared plus 5 squared. I'm not going to change that to a cube because I don't have any more room. And then you would have to write another fraction like, you know, h, what comes after j? h, i, j, k, x plus L over x squared plus cubed, if there was a cube there. But there's not. 
And so this is how you do your partial fraction decomposition. Um, this one's so big that I would never ask you to solve for those constants on top, but we're going to do some smaller ones where we solve for the constants on top. So it is what it is. This, this section, we have to cover it. You will see this in calculus. Um, by the time you see it in calculus, um, your calculus teacher might have to show the whole class again how to do this because everybody will have forgotten by then. So let's go ahead and do some other problems. Oh, the last thing I want to say is this is, um, in this section we have bookwork and a handout. The bookwork, there's I think like six problems and they will be like this where you expand it out and you don't solve for the constants. And then the handout will be the ones where there will be smaller problems, you know, won't be as big of a problem as that one. And you will be solving for the coefficients and there won't be like 10 of them in the problem. So the rest of what I do will be like stuff that you'll see on the handout, okay? So find the partial fraction decomposition of this function. So maybe you're out there with your antiderivative gun and you want to shoot this thing because you want to find out the net change and you can't quite do it because you're, you're scared to hit this with an antiderivative gun. I'm talking calculus talk by the way and so one way you can do this is trick this animal into becoming smaller animals that you actually can zap with your antiderivative gun. So how are we going to do that? So let's go ahead, if you had one of these, I'm going to go x plus 7. I'm just rewriting this. And um, first thing you want to do is factor the bottom if you could. So factors of 6 that subtract and give you a 1 or a negative 1. So we can write this as x minus 3, x plus 2. So there it is. So the first thing you do is factor the bottom. And now, these are both linear factors, so this one's a linear factor and that one's a linear factor. So you're going to say this is going to equal, and this is what we did on that other problem on the first page, this is going to equal a number over x minus 3 plus another number over x plus 2. Okay, so that's what we do. And now I have this equation here. And the rest of this problem is finding out what a and b are. So how do I find out what a and b are? I'm going to multiply this equation by the LCD. Least common denominator, so this is x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now when I do that multiplication, on the left hand side, all those guys cancel and you just get an x plus 7. On the right hand side we have two terms, so this term the x minus 3's will cancel and you'll get an a times x plus 2. This term right here, when it's multiplied by that purple thing, the x plus 2's will cancel out and you'll have b times x minus 3. So this equation we're going to be looking at. So there are actually two ways to finish this problem. And I'm going to show you both methods. I'm just going to call them, you know, method one, method two, method one. And then we'll do method two on this, okay? So method one says multiply out the right hand side of the equation. So I have x plus 7 equals ax plus 2a plus bx minus 3b. Okay, so I actually prefer method 2. The reason I'm showing you method 1 is because you may have a teacher that only uses method 1. The second reason I want to show you method one is because this kind of thing is a new thing what I'm going to do, so you might want to like pay attention that this can happen. I'm going to um, underline all my x terms in orange. So I have an x on the left hand side, an ax, and a bx on the right hand side. Now those there, 
I mean, you have a 1x there and an ax and a bx. So whatever the coefficient of the x is on the right-hand side, which would be a plus b, it has to be what the coefficient on the left-hand side is, which is 1. So basically, look at so this. I'll put a 1 in front of that. Basically, you have 1 equals a plus b. That's a little weird. I mean, we're not used to doing things like that, but that is how you do this problem here. And then the same things can be said about the constants. And you might not think 2a is a constant, but in terms of the variable x, 2a and negative 3b are constants. And so the, you set the green things equal to each other because the constant on the left has to equal the constant on the right. So I have 7 equals 2a minus 3b. Okay, let's go ahead and get another piece of paper here. So I'm going to write out this system a little nicer. So this is a plus b equals 1, 2a minus 3b equals 7. Okay, so it comes down to a linear system. I'm going to kill off the a's, eliminate the a's by multiplying the top by negative 2, and I'll get opposites there. So this gives me negative 2a minus 2b equals negative 2. This is 2a minus 3. So I'm leaving the second equation alone. So I'm going to add both of those equations together. Those a's are out of there. They've been eliminated. And I have negative 5b equals um, positive 5. b is going to equal negative 1. I'm going to plug that back into one of those equations, probably the simpler one right there. And I'll end up getting a plus b plus a negative 1 gives me a 1. So it looks like a is 2. Okay, so now remember the whole thing what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to find the partial fraction decomposition of this expression here. And so now I found out what it is. I know what a and b are. Look, a is 2. So this is 2 over. So I'm rewriting this right here. Let me circle this in yellow. 2 over x minus 3. And then plus b, so this is really, we can actually put plus a negative 1 on the top, or we can go minus 1 over x plus 2. So there's the partial fraction decomposition. And that's using method 1. Now method 1, it's a good method, it's legitimate, but it just so happened that I had to do a system of equations here. And so some teachers will always, they'll say, I'll, do, I'll always do method one. But um, other teachers will sometimes do something called method two. Let's go ahead and see what method two is. How can I do that? I'll fold this one in half. This is so high tech here. I'll go like this. Move this down like this. Method 2 shouldn't be that long. You can pick which method you want to do. So I'll say method 2. And that was method 1 there. So I have this equation here. Okay, so method 2 says you don't, you do not multiply and distribute the a and the b. What you do is you look at these guys and say, could I let x equal some number such that one of these two guys is going to end up being 0? And the answer is yes. I can let x equal, let, let, I'm pointing to this one, so let's let x equal 3 in this equation that has a circle. So x equals 3. So this gives me, in this equation here, in the circled equation, 
3 plus 7 equals a times 3 plus 2. I'm writing it all out now, but in the future I might just go ahead and put a 5 there. Okay, then I have b times 3 minus 3. So this gives me 10 equals 5a plus b times 0. That's just a 0 there. So what does a equal? a equals 2. And look, I didn't have to do the system of equations that I did in method 1. Now watch this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to let x equal something that would kill off the a would be an x equals negative 2. So when I have that, so let's try to be a little quicker about this. I'll have negative 2 plus 7, that is a 5 equals, well this is zeroed out, negative 2 plus 2, so that, that guy's dead. And then we have plus b, and I'm looking at this equation that has a circle. Uh, b times negative 2 minus 3, b times negative 5. So negative 5b equals 5, what does b equal? b equals negative 1. And so we were asked to do a partial fraction decomposition. There's the answer, and now we know what a and b are. a is 2 over x minus 3 plus b plus a minus 1, so minus 1 over x plus 2. Now if you had to put these together and, and end up with that, you would have to get an LCD and put them together and, and you would end up doing that, but you wouldn't have to do partial fraction decomposition. So this right here is the answer. Method two, we did not have to do a system of equations. Now, the disadvantage of method two is it is not going to work all the time, but it will work a lot of the time. Um, so you might be thinking, well, that's why the other teachers do method one, because it works all the time. But method one can be quite painful in cases where method two is super simple. And so what I do is I do method two as much as I can. I call it the chipping away method. I chip away using method two until I cannot chip away anymore. And in this example, I was able to chip away the whole way. Okay, so um, the next problem we do, I'm going to go ahead and use method two. And maybe we can discuss what happens with method one. I mean, it is silly for me to do these problems, two different methods each time. But maybe, you know, we'll, we'll see that another, on another problem. So let's go ahead and do problem number two. Okay, problem number two looks like this. Um, the instructions, in case you forgot, find the partial fraction decomposition. So what am I going to do with this? I'm going to write 7x plus 17 all over and we factor the bottom if we can and we can this this actually factors into x plus 3 times x plus 3 so this is x plus 3 squared okay so first step is always factor the bottom now partial fraction decomposition you can always try doing that on something called a proper rational expression let me write that up here proper rational expression. And that's what we had in our very first example and then also the one we just did, problem one, and this problem two. What does that mean? It means the degree on the top, there's a polynomial on the top, so the degree on the top is less than the degree on the bottom. When, so when this happens, when this happens, you can do partial fraction decomposition. When it doesn't happen, when the degree on the top equals the degree on the bottom or the degree on the top is greater, then you're in trouble. We can't immediately do this. And we will look at a problem where 
this doesn't happen and see what we can do. But for now, let's not worry about that too much. Um, let's go ahead and do this. I have a linear factor on the bottom. Um, actually, two of them, and it's raised, it's squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up to that. So how do I do that? I, I write a over x plus 3 plus b. Now, some students will make a mistake and they'll say, well, this is going to be over x plus 3, and they'll write two copies of this. If you continue to do it this way, you will get a contradiction. Okay, so if you continue to do it that way, so you can't. If you don't believe me now, go ahead and pause the video and see what happens. You'll, you'll get like 8 equals 0, or you know, some, some weird thing will happen. And some people are like, I like when math gets weird and they're, they're turning off the video and the privacy of their own home and they're, they're proceeding with that. But I would not recommend that for doing the problems. You have to build that linear factor up, like we just did. Okay. So what did we do next when we did this? We multiplied this equation by the LCD, which is x plus 3 squared. So on the left-hand side, we get 7x plus 17, because the x plus 3 squareds cancel. And then this term right here, one of the x plus 3s up here is going to cancel with that one on the bottom. So I'll have an a times x plus 3. And then this last term, the squared term is going to cancel with that squared term. I'll just have a b. So I'm going to go ahead and do method 2 first. And then, you know, maybe I'll come back and do method 1. Method 2 says let x equal some value to zero out something on the right-hand side. I'm going to let x equal negative 3. And I put a circle around this equation so we don't lose it. So x equals negative 3 gives us negative 21 plus 17 equals this first guy is dead. And then we have b. b equals negative 4. So that's what I get. Now you might say, oh, your method failed, Joe. Look, x equals negative 3, you, you killed off the a, but there's no way of killing off the b. That's all right. This is what I do with this method. Now that I know b is negative 4, look at this. Cross out that b and replace it with a negative 4. Now here's the funny part. I can let x equal whatever I want except the negative 3. And that will tell me what a is. And some of you are like, surely you couldn't let x equal whatever you want. I'm going to first let it equal 0 and then finish the problem. And then we can come back and say, well, we could have let it equal 27 or whatever. So if x is 0, I get 17 equals 3a, because x is 0, minus 4. Add 4 to both sides, 21 equals 3a. And what does a equal? a equals 7. And guess what? I am done with this problem. This is what I'm looking for right here. And so I'm going to rewrite that with the a and the b. So a is 7. This is over x plus 3. And then b is minus 4, so minus 4 over x plus 3 squared. Okay, so, you know, if you were wondering, well, what if I let x equal another value? So this, this right here is just, right here, this is just optional. And I put it like this in case someone's looking at the PDF and they're like, what's happening? You could have let x equal 1. And you would have ended up getting 24 on the left-hand side equals 1 plus 3. So 4a minus 4. 28 equals 4a. And a equals 
7. Look, it's the same thing. So, I mean, you could say, well, what if x equals negative 5? You'd end up getting a equals 7. And so the trick with this chipping away method is when I found b, I went ahead and put it in there, and then I, I was able to find a without distributing or doing any systems of equations. So you might ask yourself, well, how does this compare with method 1? Let's go ahead and do method 1. We're done with this problem, by the way, so you can skip ahead to the next problem if you're, you're already like, yeah, I already know how to do this. So this is what we had. 7x plus 17 equals a, and then we have x plus 3, and then we have plus b. And I had a circle around there. So we're done with this problem, but, you know, for those of you who are like, oh, I want to do method 1, how would that look? Well, I would go 7x plus 17 equals ax plus 3a plus b. Method 1 actually looks like a simpler way on this one. I'm going to look at my, my x's. Everything that has an x in it, I, I underline, and look what I end up getting. I end up getting 7 equals a. That's sweet. That's exactly what we have from there. I'm going to underline my constants. And this says 17 equals 3a plus b. 17 equals... Well, I know what a is. It's, it's 7, so this is going to be 21 plus b. I subtract 21 on both sides. Looks like b is going to equal negative 4. So there it is. I get the same results that I got right there using method 1. Let's go ahead and continue to do more of these problems. This is what you do in your homework. Okay, problem number 3. Okay, so that one looks pretty weird. What are we going to do with this one? Well, factor the bottom. Now, some of you might say, should I try factoring the top? No. It's always with partial fraction decomposition, factor the bottom. We do have a proper rational expression. The degree up there is less than the degree on the bottom. And when I factor the bottom, let's just do that over here. So this is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x. So first of all, I can factor an x out of there. So I have x squared plus 2x minus 8. And then I have a trinomial, and so factors of 8 that subtract and give me 2 would be 2 and 4. A good thing um, that this thing does factor. So I have x, x, and then I have a 2 and a 4. And I want a plus 2 in the middle, so I'm going to put the plus right there with the 4 and the minus there. Okay, so there was factoring. Factor the denominator, and I have 3x squared plus 9x minus 24 all over x, x minus 2, x plus 4. So what do I have here? I have Linear factor, linear factor, linear factor. And some of you are wondering, what happens when it looks like a quadratic? We'll get to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say a over x plus b over x minus 2 plus c over x plus 4. Now, some of you, um, when you were watching me do some of the other problems, you, you, you thought, well, what would happen if, you know, the x plus 4 was here and the x minus 2 was here? Then this would look different, and your values of a, b, and c would be different. But when you actually write your final answer, it doesn't matter which order you factor that into, you will, in the end, 
get the same answer. Like in the last one, A was 7 and B was negative 4. If you put them in the other order, you would have got A is negative 4 and B is 7. But when you wrote down your final answer, you would end up getting the same exact answer because A would be like bound to another denominator, not the same one that you had. So I'm just trying to say it doesn't really matter which order you put these in. If you're doing everything legitimate, you should get the right answer. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the LCD. Multiplying by the LCD is the x, x minus 2, and x plus 4. Almost didn't fit it, but I did. Okay. So this first term on the left, all those guys are going to cancel, and I'm going to have a 3x squared plus 9x minus 24. This equals... Okay, this, there's three terms on the right-hand side. This first term, the x's are going to cancel, and I'll have an a times x minus 2, x plus 4. And once again, where did that x go? Where did that x go? They canceled. The next term has a b in it. And what's going to cancel? The x minus 2's. So I'll have b, x, x plus 4. And the last one you're going to have plus c. The x plus 4's cancel. And you have x, x minus 2. Now, this is where it's going to be very evident that method one, where you expand it all out, is really going to be the lengthy method, the one you do not want to do. So I'm not even going to put method one down here. If you want to try it out, you'll have three equations and three unknowns, and we've already done a section like that where we did the augmented matrices and all that. I don't want to go there because this can be done a lot easier. I'm going to zero out some of these, maybe by letting x equal 0. Look at this, x is 0. So this is method 2. I get negative 24 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I have a times negative 2 times positive 4. And then these guys here, because there's an x there and there's an x there, those guys are dead. So I end up getting negative 24 equals negative 8a. Looks like a equals 3. And I have been circling this equation, so I'll circle it again. It's funny how we say we're circling something, and that doesn't look like a circle. Maybe I should say I'm looping it or something like that, but, you know, I guess it's just our English language. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. Maybe I'm really not. I shouldn't be saying circling this. Okay, let's continue. I'm wasting some paper here, but it's never a waste if it's all math. It's, it's, it's a good cause. Okay, what should I let x equal now? I'm going to let x equal maybe 2. Now some of you might say, wait Joe, I remember on one problem you went ahead and crossed out the a and put like a 3 above it. You can do that here if you want, but that's not really going to help me do any, you know, it's, this, is, this is going to go just as fast if you don't do that. So watch this, x equals 2. So this will be a little painful. I mean, I'm, I don't have my calculator around, so hopefully we can get this problem done correctly. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 18, minus 24. So I'm putting 2 into this equation. And then look at this term right here. So there's three terms over here. 1, 2, 3. This term is dead because 2 minus 2, it doesn't matter that this is going to be 6. Um, this is 0, and 0 dominates. It's, it's like, hey guys, game over. Plus b times 2 times 6. And then we have plus, 
Once again, you put a two right there, this guy's gone. He's like, ah, he just got killed off. He is zero. So look what we have here. I think we have something like a six. Could be wrong with that one. So that's uh, this guy right here is negative six plus 12. So it is six equals 12b. So what does b equal when you divide both sides by 12? It equals 1 half. Okay, um, I don't want this to go out of the range. And as you can see, that's why I tape a piece of paper on my desk so I can know what the range is. Um, unless I bump the tripod or something like that. So what do I have now? I'm going to let x equal... How uh, much should I let x equal? How about negative 4? So when I let x equal negative 4, oh, this is going to be more painful without a calculator. This is going to be negative 4 times negative 4. That's 16 times 3, which I believe is 48. Then we have minus 36. We have minus 24. And then I have, oh, look at this. Negative 4 plus 4, the first guy is dead. The second guy, negative 4 goes up there, dead. And some of you are like, you're just talking, this math lecture is full of violence. It is, actually, so I should have put a warning on this. Um, on YouTube it says, press here if it's made for children. I do not say any of my math videos are made for children just because, I mean, look at this. What kind of childhood would that be if you made your children watch these videos? And you might say, oh, well, no, that would be good. What if you were disciplining them? Well, fair enough. <laughs> Okay, so what do we have here? We have 48 minus 36 is 12. 12 minus 24 is negative 12. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have 24C. So it looks like C, forgot to circle that, looks like C is going to equal negative 1 half. And some of your are thinking about what I said, like, oh, method one is going to be more painful. Oh, for sure it is, because you are doing three equations and three unknowns, and I'd rather just do this than three equations, three unknowns. Okay, so, you know what I have? I have, I have, I know we're kind of going out of range here. A was three, B was one half, C is negative one half. So that was the result of doing the method two. The reason I write it like that is because now the whole goal was doing this. I'll circle this in yellow. I'll try to keep consistent with the colors. And um, how am I going to do this? I'll just fold this. We can fold the pieces of paper here. Why not? Okay. And so my answer then becomes 3 over x plus 1 half over x minus 2. And then we have plus a minus, so I'm just going to go minus 1 half over x plus 4. Now, some teachers wouldn't take that. They would say, oh, there's fractions within fractions. This is acceptable. On the handout, they're going to write something else. Okay, so on the handout, I just want to prepare you for that. 3 over x. They're going to go, you know, you can do a copy dot flip where this guy is over 1. And when that happens, you end up getting 1 over 2 times x minus 2. So you should be aware that, that those guys are equal. And then same thing over here, minus 1 over 2 times x plus 4. So that's another version of this. So the, um, the application, and it's really kind of tough because you guys are not in calculus yet, but in calculus you're going to be given a velocity function. And you have this thing called the antiderivative gun that can help you figure out what the position of a particle is um, by hitting it with the hitting the velocity function with your antiderivative gun. Well, when you approach this guy, 
to shoot him with the anti-derivative gun. That's scary, especially if you're in the jungle. You're like, wow, there's no way, and this guy will eat you up. But look what we did. We did some algebraic manipulations. And this guy's not so tough after all. What he really is, is these three creatures. And now when you're looking at these three creatures, you can easily hit them with each of them with your anti-derivative gun. They all have natural logs after they get hit with the gun. And I'm not kidding. I mean, that's only, that's probably only funny after you know how to do calculus too. And um, you can take care of it and find your, your position of the particle because you knew how to do partial fraction decomposition. Now, once again, you're like, wow, that surely motivated me. It should, if it motivated you, then there's something wrong with you. But um, really, you should just be saying, for this section, stinks. I hate it. So having, having that mindset, let's go do another problem. You're like, what about method one? You do method one. And some of you are like, no, you do it. And you're shouting at your computer, you do it, Vasta. <laughs> well, I can't hear you. If you're shouting at your computer, that's your own problem. People are going to look at you and they won't know the whole story. And ha, that's too bad. So what, how are we doing with time? We're at the 41 minute mark. Wow. Having a lot of good times here. Find the partial fraction decomposition of this guy right here. So which is the one that we want to factor? The bottom. This happens to be a proper rational expression. So we can do this problem. And I'm going to go factor the bottom. I'm going to do that factoring right here. Four terms to factor. So when you have four terms to factor, that does look scary. Um, I'm going to do factor by grouping. Go like this. We've seen this in this class. Partition it into two groups and factor out an x squared on the first one. So this is x minus 2. Look at the sign. I just bring it down plus, and I'm going to factor maybe a 3 out of those guys. So this is x minus 2. So I went from four terms to two terms. The first term being that guy and the second term being that guy. And these two terms have an x minus 2 in common. So I'm going to factor that out to the front, x minus 2. And this gives me an x squared plus 3. This guy is not going to factor over the rational numbers or even over the real numbers. So I'm just going to keep the denominator with that. So this becomes 4x squared minus 3x plus 11. This is all over x minus 2, x squared plus 3. So we are going to decompose. I mean, decompose this. No, we're not going to decompose. Well, maybe. Okay, so what do we have? I have a linear factor and, and a quadratic factor. So this equals a over the linear factor. And so, do you remember what goes on the top when you have a quadratic factor? It's going to be a bx plus c over x squared plus 3. So that's what goes there. So I'm going to now multiply this equation by the LCD. I don't, think, I don't know if I'm going to fit it there, so I'll put it over here. So this will be x minus 2 x squared plus 3 and this term right here the whole denominator gets flushed away and we have 4x squared minus 3x plus 11 okay this term right here the x minus 2's are going to cancel you'll have a times um, x squared plus 3 and then we have plus the x squared plus 3's cancel. Make sure you put your parentheses bx plus c times x minus 2. So I'm going to do the chipping away method. What value of x could I set it equal to? What about an x equals 2? We'll circle this equation here so we don't lose it. x 
x equals 2 is what we're going to do. And when I put that into this equation, I'm going to get 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Then we have minus 6 plus 11. This gives me a times 2 squared, which is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. Plus, 2 goes in here. Look, that's 0 times whatever that is. It's 0. Okay, 10 plus 11 is 21. I got the 10 by going 16 minus 6. 21 equals 7a. What does a equal? a equals 3. Okay, so with this chipping away method, I'm going to go ahead and put 3 there. Another piece of paper. So I'm going to say x equals, what could I do? I can let x equals 0 and that kills b off. So x equals 0, which is pretty easy on the left hand side. I get 11 equals 3 times x is 0, so 3 times 3 plus x is 0, so I'll have a c there and a negative 2. So this gives me 11 equals 9 minus 2c. And so 2 equals negative 2c. C equals negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and with my blue pen, and I don't know if you guys even tell the difference on the video, that I'm going to put this as negative 1. Now I can let x be whatever value I want it to be. So, you know, 23 is an option, but the simplest one maybe would be one that I don't have, which would be x equals 1. x equals 1. And when I do that, I end up getting 4 minus 3 plus 11. Looking at this one right here, x is 1. This equals 3 times... 1 squared plus 3, so 1 plus 3 is 4, plus x is 1, so b minus 1, x is 1 there, we end up getting negative 3, and okay, so we keep pushing this up here, we have 1 plus 11 is 12, 12 equals 12, that's good to know, and then we have minus 3b plus 3. Okay, so 12 equals, there's a few things I can do here. I'll just go 15 minus 3b. Some of you know what I was thinking. And if you don't, well, I mean, I don't know. Negative 3 equals negative 3b. So what does b equal? b equals 1. So what do I have? I'm for my values, I have A equals 3, B equals 1, C equals negative 1. And I forgot how I did this last time. How did I do this last time? I think I folded this. So here's what I'm looking at right here. And so let's write out our answer. I have a over x minus 2. So a is 3. 3 over x minus 2. And plus bx plus c. 1x minus 1. So this is just x minus 1 all over x squared plus 3. That is our answer, and that's what we got. That's our partial fraction decomposition. If you had to do integration, this would be a natural logarithm, and this would be a u substitution, um, and which would involve something, you know, I mean, you would learn that in calculus. And so that completes.
problem number four. Okay, so problem number five. What we have for problem number five, this is not a proper rational expression because the top is has a higher degree than the bottom. So you might say, well, how do you do partial fraction decomposition on this? We can't do it on this, but we can make it so we, we will be able to do partial fraction decomposition. And how are we gonna do that? Some of you are not going to like this. We are going to do long division. 2x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 2x squared plus 15x minus 4. Okay, and then outside we have the x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. What times x cubed gives me 2x to the fourth? That would be a 2x. 2x times x cubed is 2x to the fourth. 2x times x squared is positive 2x cubed. 2x times a negative x is negative 2x squared. And a 2x times a negative 1 is negative 2x. We're going to go ahead and subtract. We're going a little faster because we've seen this before. 2x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth is 0. x cubed minus a 2x cubed is a negative x cubed. Um, negative 2x squared minus a negative 2x squared is a 0x squared. And then we have a 15x minus a negative 2x is positive 17x. The 4 drops down. Now we say what times x cubed gives me a negative x cubed? Why that would happen to be uh, minus 1. Minus 1 times this is going to be negative 1 times x cubed is negative x cubed. And then we have a negative x squared. Multiplying this whole thing by negative 1, positive x, positive 1. We subtract. We get 0. We get 0x squared minus a negative x squared is plus x squared. We have 17x minus an x, which gives me a 16x. And then a negative 4 minus a 1 is negative 5. What this means is that this function right here, or did I say function, this expression here can be written as 2x minus 1 plus um, the remainder or that. So we have x squared plus 16x minus 5 all over x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. Okay, so we'll continue on this one here. So they could have just asked us to do the partial fraction decomposition of this guy right here. So my problem looks like this. Just rewrite this here. X cubed plus X minus X minus one. Okay, so now um, what I'm gonna focus on is doing the partial fraction decomposition of this guy right here. Um, before I do that, I have to factor that bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and do factor by grouping. Factor out a negative one. So I have an x plus one, which factors out of those two terms, times an x squared minus one. That is a difference of squares, so I have an x plus 1. Then this is x plus 1, x minus 1. So I'll just write this as x minus 1, x plus 1 squared. Okay, so there's the factoring. I'm going to work on this piece right here. So I have x squared plus 16x minus 5 all over x minus 1 times x plus 1 squared. I'm going to decompose this. So I'm kind of going fast and at any time you could pause the video and see if you can work this 
out on your own. This is a linear and then a linear squared. So I have a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1 plus c over x plus 1 squared. So I had to build that one up to the square. I'm going to multiply this equation by the LCD. The LCD being x minus 1, usually what you see there, then we have x plus 1 squared. So the first term becomes x squared plus 16x minus 5 because the bottoms cancel and then we have a times the x minus 1's cancel x plus 1 squared plus b times an x minus 1 x plus 1 because the x plus one of the x plus 1's up here cancels with that and then I have plus c times x minus 1 because the x plus 1's cancel I usually draw a circle around this and say let's chip away at this. Let us let x equal 1. So I end up getting 1 plus 16 minus 5 equals. Okay, I put a 1 in there. I end up getting a times 1 plus 1, 2. 2 squared is 4. Then I end up getting um, dead right there and dead right there. So this is plus zero plus zero. So on the right hand side I end up getting 12 equals 4a a equals 3. Okay another piece of paper. So what I have now, oops, that just blew away x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1. I put that into the equation. I get 1 minus 16 minus 5. I am going at the speed of light because I want to make sure this video is not going to be too long and we've already done a lot of these already. So we have this guy's dead, this guy's dead, and this guy we have c times negative 2. So this gives me negative 20 equals negative 2c. C is going to equal 10. Now, I've kind of run out of places to put x. You know, I can't kill anything else off. So I'm going to make, put a, I'll put a 3 up there because a is 3 and c is 10. And now I'm going to let x equal whatever I want it to equal, perhaps. 0 would work really good and I would end up having negative 5 on the left hand side equals 3 times 0 plus 1 squared so that's going to be 3 and then I'm putting 0 in there this is going to be negative 1 positive 1 and a b so this is going to be minus b and I'm putting 0 in there this is going to be negative 10 because negative 1 times 10 so I have negative 5 equals negative b minus 7. So 2 equals negative b and b is going to equal negative 2. So my values are a is 3, b is negative 2, c is 10. So those are the values. That's not my answer. My answer happens to be go back over here. I'm looking at this, but I can't forget the, the whole thing there. So my answer is going to start off, let's fold the piece of paper. So what is my answer going to be? So, so here's the answer. It's going to be 2 x minus 1, which is that part, and then the partial fraction decomposition of this. Okay, so here's a, so I'm going to have plus 3 over x minus 1. And then we have plus a negative 2, so minus 2 over x plus 1. So, and then the last one's going to be plus 10 over 
x plus 1 squared. So very algebraic. We didn't see any graphs. Some of you are happy about that. Um, we didn't see anything picture-wise. It was just a bunch of algebra. I know I kind of rushed through the last problem because we've done enough problems. The new part of that problem was doing the long division in case we had something that was not a proper rational function. Um, work hard on your homework and you guys have a good day.